Welcome back, everyone. Amar al-Basri was a 9th century Christian theologian who responded systematically to challenges from Muslim theologians. One of the books that he wrote is called The Book of the Proof Concerning the Course of the Divine Economy, or more mercifully, The Book of the Proof. In this book, he attempts to answer criticisms raised by Muslims regarding the display of the cross. Truly a man after my own heart, Amar doesn't appear to give these criticisms more attention than they deserve, and goes quickly on the offensive. As I've said many times, attacking Christianity is not how you defend your religion. So let's see what Amar had to say in response to these critics of the cross. As for their mocking us for venerating the cross, we will return the argument back to them. It is much more surprising to see them venerating a stone, which the polytheists had honored and venerated. Some may recall a similar argument from John of Damascus, who also criticized stone kissers for accusing Christians of worshiping the cross. But Amr notes that Muslims have several counter-arguments. First, Muslims should kiss the rock because it fell down from heaven, to which he responds, We heard that God has forbidden the honoring of stones he had created in this world, and has forbidden humans from taking them as idols to worship. So what makes honoring and venerating that which came down from heaven more worthy than that which is from the things of this world? For God is the creator of it all. Indeed, Amar could marshal evidence from the Quran itself, you who believe. Wine, games of chance, stones, and divination arrows are an abomination, part of the work of Satan. So avoid it in order that you may prosper. In his analysis of Amar's discourse, Mark Beaumont adds another interesting point by John of Damascus. If Amr was aware of John's argument, he decided not to include John's references to Abraham's connection to the stone. John reports that some Muslims say that Abraham had sexual relations with Hagar on the stone, and that others say that he tied his camel to it when he was going to sacrifice Isaac on the stone. John asks Muslims, are you not ashamed for kissing this thing just because Abraham had sexual relations with a woman upon it? or that he tied a camel to it? Yet you convict us of venerating the cross of Christ, through which the power of demons and deception of the devil have been destroyed. These Muslim arguments don't seem to be holding up too well, but Amar notes another one. Mark Beaumont comments, The last recourse of the Muslim is to say that God required them to venerate the stone. Amar goes on the attack. You should not say God has commanded us to do this, since you confess that he prohibited you from doing such a thing, and he ordered you to fight the polytheists because of it. He refers to several surahs where Muhammad is commanded to fight polytheists until they submit to Islam. Amar believes he has the upper hand and finishes by saying to his Christian reader, he does not think that Muslims can give a reasonable answer. So let's review these arguments against rock kissing. Rock kissing is just carrying on polytheistic practices. Indeed, many today find it odd that we can see these pagan practices carried forward in a religion that claims to be purely monotheistic. Second, a rock that came down from the sky is no more worthy of kissing than any other rock. In addition, we know in our modern period that hundreds, if not thousands of rocks from outer space hit the surface of the earth each year. That is a lot of rock kissing. Better get moving. And again, the Quran can be cited as proof and, of course, the stone that fell from the sky is also cited about the pagans in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. Of course, it's not difficult to find numerous pagan cultures who believed something similar. Third, having sex on a rock or tying a camel to a rock does not make said rock more worthy of kissing. That seems self-evident. And number four, if the god of Islam commanded Muslims to kiss the rock, he contradicted himself in light of the numerous passages in the Quran that speak against polytheism. However, contradiction cannot be a problem for people who think their book is a miraculously preserved literary miracle. Of course, there are other reasons not to kiss the black rock, like this one. Ibn Abbas narrated that Muhammad said, The black stone descended from the paradise, and it was white, but then it was blackened by sins. If the thought of kissing something blackened by sin doesn't kill your appetite, try this one. The rock used to be white, but the blood of menstruation made it black. And that was in the pre-Islamic era. Note the mention of the pre-Islamic era is a tacit admission that a pre-Islamic pagan practice 
was carried forward into Islam, which is a revised form of paganism. So Muslims, in the end, I do believe that sober thinkers will conclude with Amr that Muslims cannot give a reasonable answer to this problem. And since Amr's time, objections to rock kissing have only multiplied and become stronger. So Muslims, can you prove all of this wrong and give us a good answer for why you kiss the rock? Or will you conclude with Umar that you have no idea why you carry on your prophet's paganism? These objections have been around for well over 1,000 years, so by now I'm expecting you to finally have a good answer. I'll be looking for it in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.